birds are born to fly, fishes are born to swim, human beings are born to work. Work is one of the essential aspects that give human beings the identity as human beings. We are therefore called to realize the nobility and the greatness of work. My dear friends, the 1st of May is internationally celebrated as the Workers' Day or Labor's Day. It all began with the great protest on the streets of Chicago in the United States of America in the year 1886. A large number of workers gathered together to demand just wages for their work and they were demanding eight hours duty per day and they were protesting against all sorts of injustice and exploitation by the oppressors. During that rally, police force was used to silence them, scatter them and several were killed and subsequently many countries recognize the importance of the workers and today the world commemorates that event and celebrates the 1st of May as the Workers' Day. In the Catholic Church, St. Joseph is honored today as the patron of workers. Pope Leo XIII in 1889 declared Joseph as the patron of workers. In 1955, Pope Pius XII assigned this feast of St. Joseph as a worker on the 1st of May. Of course, there is another feast in honor of St. Joseph on the 19th of March, but that is honoring St. Joseph as the husband of Mary, our mother, the foster father of Jesus Christ. And today, it's fitting that we reflect on the greatness and the nobility of work as such. In the Gospels, we don't find many details regarding St. Joseph. Only in the chapters, first and second chapters of the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, we find very few mentionings of Joseph. In Mark and John, we don't even find them. And the biblical scholars say, drawing the information from other sources like the apocryphal gospels or some other historical books they say jesus began his public ministry perhaps after the death of saint joseph the faster father because we don't find any mention of joseph after the event of Jesus being lost and found in the Jerusalem temple when Jesus was 12 years old. The Eastern churches began devotion to St. Joseph in the 4th century. A feast was celebrated to honor him. In 1689, St. of Avila chose him as patron of the Carmelite orders. And in 1870, the First Vatican Council saw Joseph as a patron saint of the Universal Church. And as I mentioned earlier, Pope Pius XII in 1955 assigned this 1st of May as the commemoration of St. Joseph as a patron of workers. Joseph must have been a very popular carpenter of that time in his place. That is why in Matthew chapter 13 verse 55 when people were finding fault with Jesus 
they refer to Jesus as the carpenter's son. They were wondering at Jesus' wisdom and they were asking themselves, is it not the carpenter's son? So Jesus is referred to as the son of a carpenter and Joseph must have been a very a popular carpenter of that area. So today it's a fitting day to reflect on the greatness and the nobility of work as such. The concept of work is really deep and significant. Usually work is seen as a curse or as a punishment and it is quoted. Book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 17 where God punished Adam and Eve saying you must plow and eat sweat of your body from your forehead should fall on the earth. So it is considered as the curse or punishment. But actually in the chapter 2 verse 15 we find God put the man in Eden to till it and maintain it. So the work is given already to maintain and protect the Garden of Eden. And who created the Garden of Eden? It was God's creation. So God invites Adam and Eve to participate in the creative work of the universe. The concept of work is so deep that it gives us the identity. In the Bible, we find many imageries used to describe God. God is shown as a mother or as a bridegroom or as a king or shepherd or the son and so on. But the first imagery of God in the Bible is given as a creator, a planter, a designer, who puts things in order, brings clarity from the confusion. And we are told that we have been created in the image and likeness of God. Therefore, we are also called to be co-creators co-planter, co-designer along with God. Therefore, to work is not a curse or punishment. It gives us the identity of human beings and it elevates us to the level, so to say, of God's creative act. Work is not merely a means to live, but it helps us to constitute towards being human. As birds are born to fly, as fishes are born to swim, humans are born to work. Therefore, work should be seen in its totality and it is seen as something which gives us the dignity as human beings. It helps us to realize all our potentialities. Now you may ask, what about the work done by the animals? We employ many animals in working for us. For example, bulls are pulling the cart. They are used in the agricultural sector, in ploughing. Elephants are used to carry big heavy logs in the forest and birds make their own nests, beautiful nests. Is it not work done by all these creatures? Yes, they really do creative work in the sense we human beings cannot even imitate or repeat what they do. For example, the birds are making beautiful nests. We may not be able to make the nests as they do, 
But the point is, the birds have been doing or making their nests in the same way for hundreds and thousands of years. There is no improvement, there is no development. For example, a crow makes a nest in the same way as it has been doing for thousands of years. There is no development of first floor, second floor with more interior decorations and etc. Whereas human beings, you see, we have been living earlier in the caves, in the tree holes, in the forest. Then we could construct small houses with thatched roofs, then tiles we were using. But now you imagine multi-story buildings, even hundreds plus floors with unimaginable architectural achievements and designs we find. Why? We are doing our work with creativity and there is a development. Whereas all these other animals and birds, what they do can be called as activities. But whereas what we do is called work because there is reasoning power and creative ability are involved. The nobility of work has been insisted and highlighted upon by the church by several popes in their papal encyclicals and documents. The church insists upon the greatness of work in its social teachings. For example, Pope Leo XIII, 1891, he wrote Rerum Novarum. Pope Pius XI, 1931, wrote Quadragesimo Anno. John the 23rd in 1961, Mater et Magistra, and Vatican II insisted upon the greatness of work in Gaudium et Spes. Similarly, Paul VI wrote Popularum Progressio in 1967, and St. John Paul II, Pope, wrote Laborum Exorcens in 1981. And of course, many other documents and encyclicals have been insisting upon the greatness of work. Now, one may ask, what is really work? Can all the activities of human beings be considered as work? For example, someone makes an atom bomb to destroy a city or someone is involving himself or herself in the anti-social activities or terrorism or robbing or someone does the adulteration in the sellings of goods. Is it also work? There we must remember whatever activity is really helping us to realize our real potentialities and whichever brings out the dignity and nobility of human person, only that can be a work. So whatever is dehumanizing cannot be a work. The work must really help me to realize my potentialities. Sometime back in a parish, the parish priest found the dumb box being robbed at the grotto. He changed the lock, but again after a few days, the second time the lock was broken and the money was stolen. Again he changed the lock and kept it there, but after a few days, the third time also the lock was broken the money was stolen. And when the priest realized this, he thought to himself, oh, this poor man may not have any work or job, so let me find a job for him. And if he has a work, he will not involve, entertain himself with all such robbings and stealing. So he left a note there in the dumb box, my dear friend, I do not know who you are, but I am ready to find a work for you. And that decent job will help you so that you need not do all kinds of robbing and stealing. Please meet me. I will not tell anybody or inform the police. I will find a job for you. And after some time, again, the dumb box was broken. 
and when he opened the box he found another small letter written by the robber to the priest and there he says my dear father i thank you for your offer of finding a job for me but no need for that thank you very much i am happy with my present job my dear friends this stealing or robbing is not a job because it dehumanizes it works against honesty and so on work is so important that's we find st paul telling very clearly in second thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10 those who don't work should not eat of course we know the aged people the different label people or those who have retired after many many years of work they are all exempted but we should not give in to laziness in our lives we must do work and whatever is within our limits or according to our capacity wasting time is a big sin in fact because time is a gift from god and time is nothing but life life is a gift from god when we waste time we waste life and that in turn is a wasting of god's gift that's why someone said when you look at the clock what you see on the dial it's not the hands or the needles of the clock running over there it is your own very life running on the clock therefore we need to work we need to realize the great potentialities and all the talents that god has given to us therefore work is a blessing only the lack of work or the situation where people don't find job that is a curse unemployment is a curse because it is not giving an opportunity to that person to realize all his or her potentialities we need to give due recognition to the work done by the others we should give just wages we should not cheat them we should not ill treat them and just because someone is working under us and we are paying the salary we don't have the right to insult them or treat them badly because they are also human beings with dignity and they are also the image and likeness of god in this context the child labor is a great curse in the society because children are expected to enjoy every bit of their childhood and grow slowly gradually in realizing all their potentialities and talents but because of poverty they have to find some work to earn something to eat it is a curse for the society today we may say that child labor is abolished but often it's only on the papers only we hear that it is abolished but we do find in reality hundreds and thousands of child laborers and usually we try hard to get a job but after getting a job we are not really doing full justice to the job we try to get maximum amount of income or money with the minimum amount of input or work and that's also not right to work because by working we realize the potentialities and the talents that god has given to us in fact by working sincerely we become co-creators with god on this beautiful day let us be convinced of the nobility and the greatness of work and let us help others to get convinced of this nobility where there is no unemployment where there is no child labor and everybody gets a beautiful chance to work and to realize his or uh, her potentialities let us thank god for the creative power that we have the reasoning power that we have which enables us 
which elevates us to be the co-creators with God. Let us think about it today.